Okay, it's time to talk a little basketball, fellas. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of. <clears throat> did anything? Did anything go on? Yeah, yeah, just a, little, just a few yeah. things here and there. Yeah, nothing crazy. You didn't know anything about it. Yeah, <laughs> nothing crazy at all. Um, I'm just gonna shoot some uh, topics at you. you. Guys, ready? Yeah. So Bradley Beal traded to the Suns from the Wizards. They got Chris Paul in return. And we'll get to Chris Paul in a second. But how do <laughs> yeah, you guys? Yeah, we will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we will. How do you guys see the fit with Bradley Beal on the Suns, given all that talent they already have? Want to go first? Yeah. Go for you. Um, you first. I'm a firm believer in there's only one basketball, so that's like three uh, ball dominant players. Right. I don't see it working out too well. I did see they added a lot of depth on their bench uh, with the you know the bench players they got. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I just I mean, how often has it really worked? Like Harden, KD, right, that and was Irving. Similar. Like right. I mean, so I'm interested to see, but I don't have like not not too promising, I'd say. It does work sometimes because we've seen the Heat do it. Yeah, and we've seen the Warriors do it. Yeah, but it's gonna. It's not. I don't think it's not gonna be one of those. Just it happens. Right. I don't see that happening. It, I think it'll work. I feel like it has to work because of the skill level that this team is gonna have. You would think so. In theory, right? Yeah. I think to Sal's point that is different from the Heat and the Warriors is that those teams had guys that had the ability to play a little more off ball. We don't really, I mean, Bradley Beal's had the ball in his hands a lot in Washington. Obviously, Katie's kind of one of those players, too. Mm-hmm. And, and Booker likes to, to score with the ball, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. taking dribbles and whatnot. Yeah. So, at least one of those guys, to me, is going to have to really learn to, to, you know, be off ball. Yeah. I would think at least at least Beal and, and Booker, yeah. because they're going to be mostly on the perimeter all the time. Yeah. You, you just got to... To make it work right. to win the bas- to win the basketball game yeah. right. to win games <clears throat> just make it work and they don't seem like you know I don't really know much about Bradley Beal because he was in DC forever and yeah, they right. were just they were bad for a long time right? yeah but I don't I don't really see him being a selfish guy Kevin Durant we know that he I mean he was the man in Golden State and he's pretty much been the man anywhere he's been but he I think at this point in his career he knows and for Bradley Beal too like most important thing right now is winning a championship. Right. And Devin Booker feels the same way. He probably feels cheated that he should have got one a couple of years ago against the, the Bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also feel like it's hard to do roster building when you have four guys on maximum contracts. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm kind of, because the owner, I believe, said that they really want to see how Aiton plays with this trio. Mm-hmm. But I could easily see him getting traded to maybe supplement the, the bench or mm-hmm. the other role players. Yeah. Um, and kind of give them a little more depth rather than have another high paid player on the in the starting lineup. I'm happy to see Beal <clears throat> get out of DC. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's needed to do that. Were you surprised that they gave Chris Paul's number to him so quickly? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't really think about that. But <laughs> he did work, Not really. He did work three in yeah. Washington. Yeah. But it's I mean, like you know Chris Paul. I mean, he didn't spend his. He did. The majority was career yeah. there, so what I was mean, it, two years, yeah, yeah, or three, yeah, maybe. Yeah. He did lead him to the finals. I he get did. it, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, also, another big trade the Wizards made: they're cleaning house. Uh, Porzingis going to the Celtics. Odd, odd move by the Celtics, I think, uh, at least off the top. Uh, Marcus Smart going to the Grizzlies in that move. Um, how do you guys think Porzingis fits on the Celtics? This does nothing for me personally. I mean, I think, you know, if he can stay healthy, he's a body, yeah. he can shoot, and he's huge. But besides this, anything I hear about Chris Porzingis at this point, it's more, it's more at this point for me, show me, right? you know, for me to care. You know, at one point, they called him the unicorn, and he had a great <laughs> couple years right. in New York. But now when I hear his name, I'm just like, almost kind of thinking to myself, this guy's still in the league. Right. He's and, actually and, only like 27. And it's going back to Bradley Beal being like, we don't even know who you are because right. you're out at no man's land. He was kind of hurt for a while too, but the same with Porzingis. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, for the Celtics, they, you know, they, they need whatever they can to get past that hump. Right. I mean, I know they made it to the finals, but they probably feel like, man, we're still this close. Although they lost Marcus Smart. Yeah, do you think Smart, getting rid of Smart was the right move? Smart? Um, I mean, yeah, you don't really hear him too much, but he's a role player. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it for Celtics at least, it all comes down to Tatum and him. Tatum and Brown, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you this: it wasn't smart. <laughs> <laughs> I think Marcus Smart is the energy guy. He's kind of their, was kind of their Draymond a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he won a Defensive Player of the Year as a guard, which hardly ever happens. Yeah, and he was the longest tenured Celtic 
out of all those guys. Mm-hmm. Right. I think losing smart is a big one, but I actually think that because we think of Porzingis with his during his time in Dallas and the you know, last couple of years with the Knicks, which were not very impressive, mm-hmm. that's what we think about with Porzingis. But he actually had the best year of his career last year. And I think adding a big man that can also space the floor gives them some options lineup wise. Mm-hmm. Because Al Horford's still going to be there, and he's you know even though he's older, he's still an effective player. Yeah. So they can kind of run some interesting lineups that could you know be you know their death death lineups like yeah. the Warriors have had yeah. in the past. So I think he brings an interesting element. He's also, from what I've heard, has improved his defense a lot. So okay. that's good. Um, I think he could be a sneakier pickup than maybe we think just on okay. off the top of our head because we don't have great <clears throat> memories of Porzingis yeah. because mm-hmm. obviously he just had his best year in yeah. Washington, like yeah. you said. But no one cares about the Wizards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Grizzlies, though, picking up Marcus Smart, I think that's, you know, they got rid of Dylan Brooks, who was trying to be Marcus Smart. <laughs> right. Marcus Smart's just a way better version of Dylan Brooks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I, I think that is a very good pickup. And it's, you know, I, it just, you know, the Grizzlies had the grit and grind with Zebo and Marcus Saul, which he's not, like, he's not a bruiser, but he's still, that was kind of like that big, era. Big guy, yeah. Kind of that era. So yeah. it seems like they're kind of trying to go back to that. Right. Because the Grizzlies at this point, and probably because of Dylan Brooks, were kind of the enemy right. of the league, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, because he'd always be talking all this shit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So, I, th- I think that's a good pickup for the Grizzlies. Yeah, I think he yeah, has just some better in mm-hmm. leadership experience and whatnot. Will yeah. he wear the horrendous number 36 for the Grizzlies? <laughs> I've, been, I've been looking, and I haven't seen anything on what number he'll actually wear. Wikipedia says 36, but I think they're just... And was I forget, did we determine that that was his college number or not? No. He wore it was 33. 33, but that's he right. can't wear 33 for the Celtics. Right. Mm-hmm. So... All right, so back around to Chris Paul. Uh, he moved on to the Warriors, a little bit of a shocker. <laughs> you, want, you want some of the red? For this conversation, yes. I <laughs> um, uh, uh, Jordan Poole shipped out of town, which is you know music to a lot of Warriors fans' ears, even though he was a big part of the championship team in 2022. If you don't have him, you don't win that championship. That's true. That's no, I, I said that a lot to defend him. That's true. But, obviously, last year was less than ideal from for him. But Yeah. I mean, I know you guys probably laughed at Chris Paul coming to the Warriors. What <laughs> initial thoughts? Oh, I you know? did, man. Um, yeah, I well, I had sent that that a uh, Photoshop picture. <laughs> right. You guys were calling it before and, it even uh, happened. Yeah, and I told you, I was like, don't worry, hope's on the way. Um, I saw that the justification for it was when Steph sits, uh, they need a grown up to run the offense. Oh, definitely um, agree with that. Yeah, so I. I think that's a plus, like a positive, um, but he's also 38 years old, yeah, too, and old injury prone, old. and so, um, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, despite my hate for the Warriors, I, <laughs> it's just, it could work, but also, then again. Some things like, gotta go right, huh? Yeah, yeah. you know, you're, he's still an old player, so, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see how they, how they, so they made some other moves, too, right. so we'll yeah. see how it goes, yeah. Chris Paul is mature. Chris Paul knows what to do in the right moments of the game. Almost the exact opposite of Jordan Bull. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a jump scare seeing him photoshopped into a Warriors jersey. It's yeah. weird. Because, you know, obviously they had the Clippers years when the Warriors beat up on them after the 2014 season. Yeah. And then the Rockets years. Like, Chris Paul has been trying so hard <laughs> to beat the Warriors. Yeah. That he, the fact that he is one now, it's like he went to the dark side. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. He didn't choose to go there, but it's... I don't even know what to compare it to, really. Yeah. It's It's... Different than like a Kevin Durant going to the Warriors because he yeah. truly chose there in free agency, but yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, obviously being a Warriors fan myself, we we rooted against this guy for so many years. Oh, it just doesn't feel right that he's yeah. on on the team now. I've heard but, you talk shit about Chris Paul oh. <laughs> with good reason many times. Yeah, I mean, he always just came off to me as like a huge whiner, which not that the Warriors don't have a bunch of whiners. Yeah, I, yeah, I totally totally understand that, but. Um, yeah, just not a guy that was fun to play with, but maybe that's, you know, part of his, you know, part of his game. Yeah. Just being, being an agitator. It's going to be the ultimate irony if he wins his first (laughs) ring with With the the Warriors. Warriors. (laughs) Tried all his time to beat them to get the ring. Yeah. And he finally, he joins them. And he gets one. Yeah. I think my hate for the Warriors, I can't. That you I can't would even not, go I would, no, I wouldn't. No, we're not, not going to go there yet because I, I couldn't stand that either. Are you kidding me? 
Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Are you also surprised that they gave Chris Paul Jordan Poole as number three? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> he did win a ring, at least, but yeah, yeah. no, it's not. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just, it's very weird. Yeah. yeah. I think, obviously, it sounded weird at the top just because he was sold, like you mentioned. But uh, I think the other, the other big thing is that his contract can be wiped off the books after next year. Jordan Poole's contract was kicking in this year. Mm-hmm. So that's going to save them money going down the road. It's basically just a one-year experiment. See if this works. And like you said, he's a grown-up that can run the second unit, mm-hmm. most likely. Yeah. Um, I, I think even from this perspective, they can – Steph and Cl- uh, CP3 can spell each other not just in-game, but game-to-game. Like, mm-hmm. one guy needs a day off, yeah. CP3 can yeah. start, yeah. vice versa. Yeah. So I think it works in that way, but – just the differing styles from the way the Warriors play and the way CP3 plays, it's going to be interesting to see how that meshes. Yeah. Would Bob Myers have done this? I don't think so, but I don't think it's like a horrendous move. You know, it's yeah. just it's just not a move that really sounded like it made sense on paper. Yeah, but I think getting rid of Jordan Poole was really the best thing that they could have done. I was making the jokes that I'm already loving the Mike Dunleavy regime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I could be eating my words. Yeah. Come, I was just going to say, know, no. 11 months from now, I could be eating my words. So Don't get too excited. Hopefully, yeah, 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 yeah. I laughed at you a, a yeah. year and a half ago. Yeah, once the Warriors start fucking 18 and 2 again, or whatever. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. We'll, yeah, we'll see. All right, so not official trades made yet in these two circumstances, but Damian Lillard and James Harden have both requested out of their current situations. Mm-hmm. Uh, first off, let's start with Dame. You know, he seemed to be extremely reluctant to ask for a trade because he wanted to be loyal mm-hmm. to Portland, mm-hmm. which I totally love mm-hmm. and understand. It's pretty rare these days, honestly. Yeah. Um, but what do you think about him finally doing it? Um, I I see both sides. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I resonate with the loyalty, like, you know, but I think he's asked time and time again to help him with the roster. Yeah, someone you know, some and guys. I don't think they have and uh I think, you know, it's time and <clears throat> you know, he can go contribute somewhere else with a more talented team. Um and I don't think he wants to be around for the youth movement. No, so not at all. um the, yeah. scoot, the scoot movement. Yeah the scoot, scoot, movement. <laughs> scoot, scoot Yeah. Um but yeah I uh I think he's justified in it and he's paid his dues and he's tried his hardest. So yeah, yeah I think he's I think he's uh he, 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 I think I think it. the Heat would be a good fit for him. Yeah, he, yeah, he for are, sure. reportedly his preferred destination. Yeah. I think we talked about this on, I believe, the last episode that that would probably be a, a really good fit for him. Yeah. But uh, I agree 100% with what yeah. he said. Mm-hmm. You know, you, go, you can only do so much. He can only be so loyal. He's only getting older. And he needs to look for he needs to look into his best interests and do what he can to win a championship. Yeah, because yeah. that's because when he when he was on the when he got <clears> selected to the top seventy five team, people were like. Are we sure? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think I think he's out to prove something that like you know what I am one of these guys. Yeah. And if, I think if he gets a ring anywhere, yeah, I don't even think it'll look bad because it's not like he's trying to join yeah. the Nuggets or I mean the Heat obviously made it to the finals, but yeah. we all can agree they got outmatched. Yeah. yeah. And they it were may, the playing team. And, too, and it might look yeah. better for him if he goes to the Heat and he's that player, that key component that right, elevates that them to the championship. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think he's thinking that way, yeah. and I like it. Yeah. yeah. And also to your point, I think he's done a really good job of creating this narrative that he has been the guy that is very loyal, regardless of what he's asked for or whatever. And, and you know, now that re- requesting a trade doesn't look that bad because, yeah. like in other situations, like James Harden, who's requested three trades in the last three years. <laughs> <laughs> he he almost needs to be an ISR jail. <laughs> Dude, hey, we are, are getting. Do we need to do it right now? Yeah, on air. Uh, or should we hold hold our horses until maybe something happens? Yeah, we'll hold our horses. Yeah. Okay. But I'm getting tired of hearing his name. Yeah, I just am. So he reportedly, James Harden, that is is interested in moving to the Clippers. Do you think that they would have to give up Paul George to get him? Uh, Obviously, the Sixers are in a win now mode, so they want something. Yeah, I've able. heard that, but I don't think they should do that at all. Do you think maybe the Clippers could say we're kind of over with this Paul George Kawhi Leonard thing? Yeah, I think we'll that's, give somebody else a shot. I think that's and then yeah, James Harden's a free agent at the after this one year contract, mm-hmm. where they could just completely change course if they really want to. Yeah, I just hate seeing. I've said this before. I hate seeing you know former great players or you know players that are really good just keep jumping ship. It's kind of like what I've said with Chris Paul in the past. Like seeing him go from you know you know Clippers and he went to. Rockets, and then he went to the Thunder, and then he went to the Suns. Like I yeah. just hate. I mean, I know it's a business. Westbrook's kind of done the same thing, unfortunately. Yeah, but unfortunately. I just James Harden needs to figure it out, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like he's 
he's past that point of where I think he could even be a championship player. Yeah. Even if he ever was potentially that guy, but yeah. I don't know. Uh, he's he's definitely not the like uh, like who was in Houston yeah. like the the main guy, um, but I think he can still contribute, uh, you know, to a to a team that's contending. But I mean, he's just not. A lot of them have big egos, so you know, right. some of them don't want to let go of like, yeah. oh, you know, like because I think that was Westbrook's thing too for a while. For sure, yeah. Um, I get it. Yeah, and so I just personally, yeah, I'm, like Gage said, I'm kind of tired of hearing where's James. Like he's past his. Like, I don't. I don't care where James Harden goes because it's not going to make a difference yeah, to the team that he yeah, goes to. Yeah, I think so. Well, do you think he could? I'm guessing your answer is going to be no. But do you think he could even be the second best player on a championship contending team? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I think he could go to like the Lakers and be the second best player. <laughs> you think he would be second best? But oh, like, like if you kept Anthony Davis and LeBron there, he would be I th- the second best player on that team. I get it. over either one of those guys. I don't think so. I don't know. You, don't, you don't think he'd be better than Anthony Davis? No, I think AD right yeah. now is better. A little closer to his prime for one, and he had, actually had a really nice season, yeah. especially down the stretch. Okay. And Harden did some good in in the playoff. He uh, had a Sixers. couple games, but he also had his. But typical... then he disappeared. For well, you were just so. you were just saying the second best team or the second best player on a team. That's what he it's, the Sixers is right. where he is. But is, yeah. is there a different situation? Yeah. Do you even think it's possible, like to be? In a different situation, be the second best guy on a team, and be a contender. I don't even think the Clippers like if they had to trade Paul George. What if you went to the Warriors? I I mean, it would never happen. (laughs) I'm just saying because Steph would clearly be number one. Yeah. And would you like? I think even could James James, is James Harden better than Clay Thompson and Draymond Green? And see, or that's a tough one, honestly. I, I think you would have to just pretend CP3 wasn't yeah. in there yeah. and, and put James Harden in there. Think of I think I think he could go to the Kings and be the second best player. Yeah. If, not the, if not the first best player. System two though, because right. like well, Harden wouldn't fit in the worst system. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because like he's gonna have to run around. <laughs> right. he, he, I that's haven't seen game. him run and since Thunder days. For, right. Or what if you went to the Nuggets? <laughs> Do you think he's better than Jamal, Jamal Murray right now or no? Oh, I don't know. That's, that's, tough. that's tough. Jamal Murray had a good playoff run. Yeah, he did. Um, anyway, which we know, you know, as being a Thunder fan, he doesn't have good playoff runs. Now, now. Third best player on a team, is that like an obvious championship contender to you? I don't want to go on a tangent or on a rampage on this, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even I, know. It's hard to say no because if you're with two superstars and you just add James Harden, even though we've seen them do that yeah. with Brooklyn, it was, it was shaky. But those guys were hurt a lot. So yeah. That was never really seen through, if I, you will. I think he can contribute wherever he goes to. It's yes, just absolutely. a matter of him buying into like you're not the main, yeah. the main player. And showing you know? up in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. That too. Um, I guess we had a little more time for a couple more topics. One more thing. Mm-hmm. So, being a Thunder fan that you are, would mm-hmm. you wear a James Harden jersey? Oh yeah, Ooh. okay, for sure, okay. for sure. Yeah. Um, he kind of asked his way out, but it wasn't like it, it, the Thunder it, were like he, no. He wanted to get paid. Yeah. Well, his best year was the year we went to the finals against the Heat, and mm-hmm. it, and it's a shame they didn't get to. Right. You know. So, and he came off the bench too, which was cool. But yeah, like the, his OKC days. Very underrated. The Thunder won that first game in those five. I forgot they did, yeah. Huh? They they got, everyone's like, LeBron's losing another we, one. We got hoed by the freaking refs, bro. <laughs> then didn't the, the Heat won four straight. Yeah, yeah. rough yeah. scene. We ha- but we did have Derek Fisher as backup player. That's card. right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a little more white, Sal? I'll, or try, or the re- red? I'll try the red. You want to go for some yeah. red? All right. Sal's getting two RD tastings in two days. Yeah. Yes. It's delicious. Uh, Kyrie Irving resigns with the Mavs. What do we think? I'm not... I'm happy that it's done. Yeah. It's kind of like James Harden. I'm tired of talking about it. Yeah, Kyrie Irving's getting to that annoying stage. Yeah. For sure. And Kyrie Irving's also getting bounced around. Yeah. And I know he's just signed, but it seemed like he was like, oh, you know, Celtics. Mm-hmm. And I'm going. Well, so you saw the absurd Suns rumor. I was yeah, like, that made oh, no come sense. Come on now. What, yeah. are you going to play for $5 million? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> The thing for me is I never saw the fit with the Mavs with Luka being there, so I don't really love this for him, mm-hmm. but I guess it's going to be nice that they will actually get a chance to kind of see a full season through and, and mm-hmm. see how it works, but the, the, he didn't really have many suitors, I didn't think. I mean, I felt like the Lakers could have been a fit. Um, I, I said in recent episodes that that should be who they go after, but yeah. I guess they didn't want to do that, which is understandable. He's a head case a little bit. Yeah. But he's still a great player. Yeah, yeah. he really no, he is. can he can do some damage. He really, really. Yeah, is. he's one of my favorites personally, yeah, just off skill wise. Um, oh yeah, he's just he's an assassin. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, you know, same thing. Yeah, Hart, like you said, Harden. Like you're hearing that name constantly. Like where is he going after? But to your point too, as well. Yeah, it's cool. He'll stay a full season, yeah. and they can kind of 
you know, build chemistry. Because that's the problem with the Nets, KD, and Harden thing. Like, right. They One all ball. came, like, yeah. like half through the way through well, the yeah, season, you know, sure. and, like... It's hard to do that. It's hard to build chemistry yeah, like that. Yeah, so, yeah, it'll be cool to see them play it through. I'm only guessing that Luca probably was interested in this reunion, or else they wouldn't have done it, I don't uh-huh. think, right? Yeah. Uh, Draymond Green, not shockingly back with the Warriors. I mean, there were some rumors about, you know, your Kings, maybe. I would have loved it. That would yeah. have been it, cool. it would have been very hard. It'd be like how you feel about CP3 right now. Yeah. I would have been like, Draymond Green's on my favorite team, right. and I've rooted against this man for years. I would have loved him to be on the Kings. Yeah. I think the Kings need Kings needed that toughness. You know, mm-hmm. some guys been there. So and yeah, the, the Kings are still very far behind, in my opinion, when it comes to winning a championship. Yeah, they have some steps they need to take, but sometimes it's just about going through yeah. playoff series and getting that experience. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the first step is their new clean jerseys that they got. Oof. Yeah, yeah. thank like you for showing me that. Mm-hmm. Those are nice. Look <laughs> them up. You haven't seen the new Kings jerseys. I'm usually a fan of the black jerseys, but I love the white ones. The white ones yeah. are smooth. Yeah. The white ones are nice. They, I told you the font's like really <clears throat> nice. And the black yeah. numbering, mm-hmm. it's, it's just clean. One thing that I could compare CP3 going to the Warriors and Dr- or Draymond going to the Kings is when Richard Sherman came to the 49ers. Oh, but yeah. It, but they, it, they kept saying that on the radio. But yeah. didn't, like, did you somewhat embrace Richard Sherman to, to a degree? Like, not as like... You have to. He's my favorite player yeah. by any means, well, but... I have my, the only, the little thing I'll say is... Um, we we were right before we made that Super Bowl run, so uh, we were still a shitty team. Right. Um, but he went in, and there was like a little skirmish, and he went in and started swinging on people, and I was like, okay. I was like, Richard Sherman's <laughs> he came like, to play. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. only experience. He wants yeah. to win. Yeah, yeah. He's so a- I he yeah he he trained a lot of the DBs too, right. so it was cool. And he yeah he definitely helped solidify the defense that year. Mm-hmm. It was kind of a bummer he was hurt. What, most of the next year, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. He, and he was getting burned by it. Yeah, he was losing so his step. He had no speed Definitely left. Definitely losing yeah. his step. <laughs> Did he, he play for the Bucks the year after for a little bit? For a little bit, yeah. yeah. But it was pretty much touched. Yeah. What happened in that Niners Super Bowl run? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 When have Cowboys made yeah. it to the Super Bowl? Yeah, it's been a long time. I, I, got, time? I will not talk shit about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fully admit it's been a long time for my Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> That's the first time I think I've mentioned the Cowboys in this podcast. about... <laughs> Five episodes. Been a minute. Good for you. <laughs> Which is great for I'm me. proud. So proud. Uh, last NBA topic, NBA draft. Obviously, Big Vic went number one. No shocker there. Anything else that stood out? Uh, well, Brandon Miller went two. Scoot Henderson went three. Yep. And you know us with our numbers. Wemby's going to wear number one. I'm okay with it. Yeah, that'll work. It's weird on him because he's just so tall. Yeah. Yeah. He looks like a giant number yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon Miller's going to wear 24, of course. When I think of 24, I just think of Kobe. I think it's a great number. Mm-hmm. You can't go wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Scoot Henderson, though. Is he double zero? Double zero. Yeah. And I think he's doing this solely based on a marketing campaign. Oh, for the Scoot thing? Yeah. Yeah. Du- the double zero. And I think it's, it's a, a weird, num- weird number. It reminds me of Robert Parrish. It reminds me of Aaron Gordon on the Magic. But I, I love where his head's at. Okay. And it works. Yeah. Double zero. Why not? Good job, Scoot. Who did, who did Thunder get in the first round? Uh, we got. I think I have it up here actually, just a, in case. We have a. We got a big man. I know he he's a big man. Um, oh, uh, Derek Lively. Yeah. Oh no, no, they traded him to the Mavs. I'm sorry. Oh Kassan, no. K- Kassan Wallace. I think so. What yeah. team is he? Was he, he from? He went to Kentucky. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, they were traded. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got. A, we needed. We needed a like a power forward. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm interested for Chet. He gained a little muscle. Right. I saw. Yeah. Yeah. I saw. Yeah, he saw a little muscle. Pounds? I was like, bro, you better because. Giannis is going <laughs> right. to throw you, bro. <laughs> going to finally get to uh, make that NBA debut, mm-hmm. hopefully. I saw Keegan Murray's brother oh, yeah, got drafted. Oh, okay. a, a, team, a spot before the Kings. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, okay. That would have been funny. If they Did you go to Indiana? He went yeah. to Pacers? Yeah. No, is Blazers, sorry. Blazers. Blazers. Is yeah. Chet eligible for all the like rookie stuff? Because he I never so. played, right? Yeah, I, I, also say, ben Simmons, well. I might do a future bowl prediction. I'll say it. We can talk about it. Okay. I think Chet could be a dark horse rookie of the year. I kind of forgot about him because a lot of people were obviously talking about Wemby and yeah. uh, even Scoot. You yeah. Know? yeah. But, yeah, he, he could be I think there. it's a dark horse bull prediction. It's going to be interesting to see how he adapts because mm-hmm. even though he's gotten bigger, he's still, you know, still the physicality of the NBA is different yeah. than college. Mm-hmm. Also, the Kings drafted the EuroLeague, EuroLeague MVP. Um, who did they get? What was his name? But I don't think that I don't think that was with their first pick. But I think okay. I saw it later in the later, later in the draft. Which mm-hmm. hey, you know, I'll take MVPs. 
some kind of MVP. Uh, they might know I am a secondary Kings fan. That's my secondary yes, team. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Brother, Jumped absolutely. on the wagon last year? No. Hey, <laughs> it wasn't a coincidence. Once you started room for them, they made playoffs. So I will say, once say. Sal said he was a Kings fan, the Kings made the playoffs, so you're okay in my book. Good, good luck, Charmin. Hell yeah, man. Light the beam. Like no, when you want to join the Cowboys being a wagon. Never. <laughs> never. Ever. 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 That's, that's out of the question. <laughs> He's too far gone. 